Our understanding of copper owes much to two rare genetic diseases involving copper metabolism. In Wilson's disease, copper cannot be excreted and thus accumulates to toxic levels. In Menke's kinky hair disease, which owes the name to the resulting peculiar fuzzy hair, copper absorption is severely impaired, inevitably leading to deficiency. These two conditions are a reminder that, as with any other mineral, both too little and too much are very dangerous situations. Wilson's disease patient face severe oxidative stress, neurological symptoms, and liver cirrhosis. Menke's disease patient presents scurvy-like symptoms with opening wounds, bleeding gums, and weak blood vessels prone to aortic rupters or ventricular hypertrophy. They also face neurological disorders, and if untreated, an early death. Marginal copper deficiency is not uncommon in the population at large and may increase risk for osteoporosis, neurologic disease such as Alzheimer's, and cardiovascular disease. Copper in itself, just like iron, is one of the strongest oxidants of all. It generates destructive free radicals that can damage body tissues, DNA, and lead to accelerated aging, cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular, and neurological disease. This is why you won't normally find free copper in your body. It is always bound to something to tame its high reactivity. On the other hand, the very same redox reactivity that makes copper potentially very dangerous if uncontrolled or in excess also makes it essential in biological systems to transfer electrons from one molecule to the other. Ironically, too little copper can have a pro-oxidant effect just as much as excess copper, although in a completely different way. Copper is a cofactor, together with zinc, of superoxide dismutase, one of our three major antioxidant enzymes. Copper is required by many other enzymes that are critical to our metabolism. As part of ceruloplasmin, it is essential for intestinal iron uptake and incorporation into the iron carrier transfer. For this reason, copper deficiency can lead to anemia even if dietary iron is adequate because without copper, iron cannot be used. Even worse, it will instead build up in tissues such as the liver, promoting oxidative damage. As part of lysyl oxidase, copper is necessary for the formation of collagen and elastin. With copper deficiency, scurvy-like symptoms appear, and cardiovascular disease risk increases due to the weak connective tissue, which may lead, for example, to heart hypertrophy or aortic rupture. Other enzymes that require copper are cytochrome C oxidase for the electron transport chain in mitochondria, monoamine oxidase for deamination of monoamines, tyrosinase for the formation of melanin from tyrosine, the saturase for conversion of saturated fatty acids to monounsaturated fatty acids, and many more. The recommended daily allowance for copper is 0.9 mg. The upper tolerable intake is 10 mg. Organ meats and shellfish are the richest sources of copper. Just a few bites of calf liver are enough to cover the daily requirement for this mineral. A couple of medium-sized oysters will also do the job. In general, copper is found in fish, meat, eggs, whole grains, nuts, seeds, legumes, and mushrooms, but is very low in milk and dairy, fruits, and vegetables. Among plant foods, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, wheat germ, and spirulina are all very good sources of copper, as well as brewer's yeast.